running for governor, right? Yes. Uh, how many times have you been to Yuma uh, as running for governor? Oh boy, since I, uh, maybe, maybe four times? And many times before that, obviously. I've lived in Arizona since 1994, but running for governor, um, four. One of them was right before I announced I was running that I came down as well. Nice. And who would you, I guess, like Yuma voters to, to know about you? I think I want them to know that I care deeply about all of Arizona, not just Maricopa County. So many, um, so many campaigns concentrate on Maricopa County because that's the main population base. And I'm originally from Iowa. I'm from a rural community. My neighbors were farmers, and I know how important our agriculture community is. Arizona's small towns, Arizona's medium-sized towns are so critical to this state, and really what makes this state unique and special. And our agriculture community in Yuma County is one of the most important, not only in Arizona, obviously, but in the whole world. The uh, technology they employ to, to grow, uh, the fruits and, and vegetables that we rely on in this country, um, are some of the best that we, we could see anywhere in the world. And we can actually learn a lot from Yuma County. The whole world can learn a lot from Yuma County and how they farm here. So tell me about what you're doing here today. You're knocking on doors, you had a water meeting, you're gonna go over to the border, right? Big, busy day. Yeah, we did some canvassing. We knocked on a few doors and, and my team is still out there knocking on doors. I talked with a couple of the water experts down here. We wanna make sure that Yuma can keep their water. We don't want um, to take anybody's water away. And then we're going to head to the border with um, one of the media outlets, one of the fair media outlets, uh, Real, Amer ben, right? Real America's yeah. Voice. And we're, going to, and we're going to take the story of what's happening on our border to the people of America. And they already know about it. They know that what's happening on our border is outrageous. They know that Joe Biden has put every single Arizonan at risk. And he's put every single American at risk because of his incompetency when it comes to our border. I mean, frankly, I think Joe Biden's incompetent on, on pretty much everything, but I covered Arizona as a fair journalist for 27 years, and I never saw our border more secure and run better than when President Donald Trump was in control. And we need to get those policies back ASAP. And that's why I have the most bold and aggressive border of any candidate or any, uh, basically, any politician or any governor that's take my campaign, uh, you know, my, we need to take actually my policy when it comes to the border and get it happening right now in Arizona. I've actually given it to Governor Ducey and said, please take this and put it in place right now to protect Arizonans. So if you, you know, were elected as governor, what are some of the things that you would do in Arizona? Because you would be when Joe Biden is in office, so there's certain things on the federal level that he has control over at the border, but state-wise in Arizona, what are the things that well, let me tell you what I would do with the border. For starters, on day one, after I take the oath of office, after I remove my hand from the Bible, we're going to sign, a, issue a declaration of invasion. We have an absolute invasion on our border right now. We've got the cartels having operational control of our Arizona border, and that's unacceptable. We're going to send our Arizona National Guard to the border and arm them. We're not going to allow people to just walk in anymore. This is outrageous. They're walking right into the arms of Border Patrol. And they don't want this. Border Patrol has been um, demoralized by President Biden. And we're not gonna allow that to happen anymore. We're gonna stop people from coming across the border. We're gonna take back the materials to build that wall, and we're gonna take them back and finish construction of President Trump's wall. We're gonna do that on state and federal property. Our Constitution allows us to do that. Article 4, Section 4, of the Constitution requires that the federal government actually protect us from invasion. They're not doing that right now. But there's a remedy in that beautiful document, the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, that we, the state, can protect our own citizens. And it's basically state war powers. And we're going to take that. We're going to enact Article 1, Section 10 and protect our people and protect this country, by the way. It's going to take a strong governor to do that. We have two border states left that we, we can have hope for, and that's Texas and Arizona. We're not going to let this state go to somebody like Katie Hobbs, who is an open borders person. She's going to turn this state into California. That's why I'm running. I'm not going to let this state go into the hands of Katie Hobbs, who, wants, who, who looks at California, and she sees uh, exactly what she wants for Arizona. We don't want that in Arizona. We want to stay uniquely Arizonan. And we've got to protect the border. We've got to keep this fentanyl out. They're trying to poison this country with fentanyl. It's not about drug overdoses. This is poisoning of our children, of our young people, and of our country. 
And we need a governor who's going to stand up to Joe Biden, who's an illegitimate president. I'm not going to take orders from Joe Biden. We're going to do it the Arizona way. And I plan to do that. For, you said, you know, talking about building the wall on, on state and federal land. What would you propose about the area along the Yuma border with the Tokopa Reservation? And then also, if you're going to close, I guess, those gaps, what would be your process for migrants who are trying to seek asylum in the U.S.? Well, well my plan um, is to finish President Trump's wall project. President Trump's wall project has about 20 miles left, and so that's what we're going to finish. We feel that President Trump had a good plan, and we'll just finish his wall. He's 20 miles away from being finished. We can finish that in short order. I think a uh, few months we could have that wall finished. So we're going to finish his project. And what was the second part and of the well, question? Like the Cocopa Reservation itself? He didn't have a plan yeah. to build a wall on that. So that's that's sovereign. There, so what would be As you know, that's sovereign, sovereign yeah. land. And so we'll work with our, our tribal partners. You know, I don't think anybody, whether they live on tribal land, whether they live in Yuma, whether they live in Phoenix, wants fentanyl and deadly drugs coming into their community. I know for a fact people who live on tribal land don't want that. They don't want what's happening with our open border and the desecration of their land to be happening. So I think we can work with our tribal, with our, I, <laughs> we got a tough spot here. I, I plan to work with our, our, our tribal leaders and we'll work something out. Because I know that the people living in the Kokopa Nation and in the Ta'ana Odom Nation, people living there don't want to have drugs pouring through their communities, don't want their land desecrated. So we'll work with them. But right now, we're, the plan is to finish President Trump's wall project. We've got 20 miles left of that, and we're going to finish that. Is, you, you had a second part yeah, to how, that. How does, like, I guess, that plan of finishing the wall um, merge with you know migrants who are trying attempting to seek uh, asylum in the United States well our, our asylum uh, you know President Trump had a great plan of policy which was basically you stay in Mexico for that if you're seeking asylum you go to the next country you can get to where you will not be uh, you know persecuted our asylum laws protect you from your government from going after you for religious reasons uh, persecuting you for political reasons they do not allow people to come in because of economics and because of gang violence. That's not how our asylum laws work. And I'm not saying that we don't have a lot of sad cases coming in, but America cannot take on the world's poverty and the world's problems. And what we have are a lot of asylum fraudsters. Probably about 10%, maybe 5% of the people coming this way seeking asylum are true asylum cases. The rest are asylum fraudsters, and we're not going to take on everybody and act like they have a true asylum case. We're going to look for the ones that are true asylum cases, and we'll process those. But we're not going to turn everybody into an asylum case. And I think that's Joe Biden's plan, to be frank. They've got people, they've got activists who are training right now to be asylum evaluators. And Joe Biden's plan is to give everybody asylum. That's not going to fly. And it's not going to fly with me, and it's not going to fly with the people of Arizona. We'll take on true asylum cases, but we're not going to take on these asylum fraudsters, and we're not going to take on the world's poverty. We have enough Arizonans who are struggling. And to take people in, set them up in a hotel, give them health care, give them cell phones, give them plane tickets, it's outrageous. And the people of Arizona will not have it. And I, as governor, will not have it. Part of your and, and we don't have to worry about the federal government. Once we take, w once we declare an invasion, we're going to take control of our border. We're going to take control because the federal government had their chance and they're not doing it. Part of your border policy also would be to um, give the power to some sheriff's deputies to deputize uh, Arizona. Can you tell me even more about what yeah. the process would look we, like? You know, as you probably know, Adam, all of our police agencies, all of our law enforcement agencies, should I wait? <laughs> you're loud. It should catch you. It's, it's all natural. I know how this works. Yeah, you're good. Sometimes it's tough with that. Um, okay, cool. All of our law enforcement is understaffed right now. We have a lot of good men and women who've served in the military before, who've served in law enforcement. There's no reason we can't deputize some of those heroes, have them work alongside with our sheriff's deputies, especially in these, in these counties that are bordering the border and, and, and uh, give them some assistance so they can basically work more area. 
So we'll do that. We're going to get um, National Guard, our, our Arizona National Guard, and we're going to work in a compact with other states, get their state National Guards on the border, arm these men, and protect our border. This is what we do. We got to protect our homeland. We are seeing an invasion. It's about to get worse. The worst invasion we've ever seen on our homeland since the founding of this great nation. And we're not going to sit back and take it. We're not going to allow Arizona to be invaded. It, it, the buck stops with me, and I'm not going to allow this to happen on my watch. It might be happening on the current governor's watch, but it's going to stop in January of 23. And the world will get the message. We're not coming through Arizona anymore because we can't get into Arizona illegally anymore. I know you have, uh, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. I guess, where do you feel like you, you stand right now with the governor's race? Well, How uh, confident do you feel about winning in uh, November? I feel very confident. We're, we're far in a way that the lead in this race. We are head and shoulders above everybody else when it comes to the polling. We've raised more money than any other candidate in the race. And we've got money coming in from Arizonans, obviously, but from all 50 states. People are so concerned about Arizona because what happens in Arizona doesn't stay in Arizona when it pertains to our border. And every single state wants to make sure Arizona has a strong governor. And that's why they're making donations to us. I'm endorsed by President Trump. I'm endorsed by the entirety of the America First movement. And more importantly, I'm endorsed by Arizonans who know and trust me. I was in their homes for 27 years as a fair journalist. I've covered this state, I understand all the issues, and I have a relationship with the good people of Arizona, a solid relationship, and they trust me, and I trust them to make decisions for their family. That's why when it came to these mandates that were being forced on us, and they were telling people they had to lose their job if they didn't get the jab, that's outrageous. And the way we handled COVID was outrageous. We should have told people of Arizona about the risks and allowed them to make decisions based on what they need for their families and for their businesses and, uh, and not cause so much harm to Arizona. Anything else you, you want to share? Uh, I just encourage Arizonans to go to my website, carrylake.com, and I encourage Arizonans to get registered to vote right now and also to vote on August 2nd. I would appreciate their support. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.